All right, welcome to our uh, third lab. Uh, our third lab is uh, here at the start of our, our second week, and uh, we're going to do force and motion. So uh, grab your lab manual and turn, or in your case, uh, PDF scan, to page uh, 17. And 17 has a nice little discussion about distance and, and velocities and, and all those things. Um, then they have the procedures on page 18, but again, doing this remotely, uh, and me pretending to be your lab partner, um, I've got the procedures memorized here, so I'll just kind of uh, lead us through that. And then we'll be writing our data here on page 19. So. As far as you go, uh, I let me encourage you to print out page 19, uh, and for that matter, page 20, and 21, and 22, and uh, 20, 23. Yeah, there's three labs to this one. Almost forgot. All right. So uh, print out those uh, pages, and we'll we'll start here together, and then ultimately. Uh, what you will turn in is these one, two, three, five pages. The, the raw data, the three graphs, and then the answer to these questions. And again, like the last lab, uh, let me look a little bit at these questions with you, because uh, again, they are, they are really good questions, at least the uh, learning and the point of the question is, but uh, they're not asked uh, very well, and they can be improved upon in terms of uh, how they're uh, written, particularly the last one, and so I'll, so I'll address that one at the end. So that being the, uh, the idea, let me, uh, even if this wasn't a remote setting, uh, begin by kind of giving you the big picture before we get into the equipment we actually do the lab, what we call the gist of the lab, what is the point of the, of the lab. And so I'll, I think I'll need quite a bit of uh, space here, so I'll come way over here and just to remind you that we've been doing Newton's, uh, that kind of in the way, I'll, maybe I'll take that down for just a second, uh, the, the pole too. Well, uh, I won't be here much, but uh, Newton's, uh, well, three laws of motion, but in particular, this lab has to do with the second law of, of motion. And so we learned that the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. And from the lecture part of class, uh, you hopefully caught that I kept emphasizing that the acceleration is determined by two factors. Well, the first one is how much net force do you give it, and that's the combination of all the forces. And in our case, we're going to have two. So we're going to put two forces together. And then also the mass. And so the goal here today is to see, is Newton's second law correct? Is it valid? So we're going to build what's called an Atwood's machine. Uh, Atwood ran an experiment and he took, took Newton's ideas and built a little experiment. He built a lot of different experiments and so anything that we have pulleys with ropes going over pulleys we call an Atwood's machine. So we're going to build this Atwood's machine and this Atwood's machine is going to test Newton's second law. It comes in two parts. Uh, let me put right here on the board uh, part one and then over here on this side of the board uh, let me put parts two because I would describe part one as this way. We're going to change the net force and see how it affects the acceleration without, and so I want to emphasize this, changing the mass. And so we're going to set a little experiment where as we keep changing the net force without changing the mass, we'll see how it affects the acceleration. Now watch, I'll just come back over here. Newton's second law is simply saying they are proportional. They're saying that if you were to double the net force, you should double the acceleration. If you were to triple the net force, you would triple the acceleration. That's how we put into words what we mean in the numerator. It is directly proportional, assuming you don't change the mass. And that's what we're going to do in part one. And so part one is the first half of Newton's second law. And you can see the second part would be change this. And so let me come over here to the, to the board because I would describe part two this way. 
uh, we're going to change the mass of our object and see how it affects the acceleration without changing the net force. And if I can use another word, uh, usually in your math class, is that, okay, this is your independent variable. This is what will change to see how it affects this one. And so this is our control. Uh, same thing here in part one. Our independent variable is going to be the net force. We're going, to, we're going to change it. We're going to see how that affects, that's the dependent variable, the acceleration, and we're going to hold the mass constant. That's going to be our con control. And then, of course, what that will hopefully prove by the end of today is that this relationship is correct. Uh, that is, if you double the net force, you would double the acceleration, that's called directly proportional. But if you were to double the mass, you would be cutting the acceleration in half. Uh, that would be referred to as an inverse relationship. And so we're hopefully going to show that they are inversely proportional by the time we're done. And so mass and acceleration should be inversely proportional, whereas net force and acceleration should be directly proportional. So, so that's what Newton is saying here, and, and we're going to see if that is, is true. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to build an object, and I want you to think of this as one object, not two. Uh, you might kind of think of it as two, because we're going to put a string between two weights. And so let me call this one, and let me just check the numbers, which one is bigger. Uh, M2 is always bigger. And so let me call this over here M2, and this one over here M1. And so the mass of the whole object is the sum of the two. And so again, you might accidentally think of this as two objects. Do not think of this as one big object. So the total mass is what's going to move. Now, this object will pull to the right, and this object will pull to the left. And so what that means is the net force is a result of the competition between those two forces. You see what's clever about this setup then is I could then change the amount of force in number two compared to number one and thereby changing the net force but not change the total mass and that's what part one is all about. And so if I hold up page 19 here, uh, you will see that they are saying put 610 on one side and 590 on the other. And if you do that, you will have a total mass of 1.2 kilograms or 1,200 grams. And if you scan all the way down here, and I, I guess I don't need to write it on the board, but if you look at page 19, you'll see that the sum of those two masses is always 1,200. And so that's what I mean by saying we won't change the total mass. But the reason we're changing their value is, here's what we're going to do with this object. I want you to think of it as one straight object, but what we're going to actually do in the experiment is take and lap that string over a pulley. And so it looks something like this, and so we are going to use the weights of the object as force number two. And the weight of this one, number one, as weight, or, or, or force number one. 
And so again, the whole thing's going to move. So we're still going to think of this as one object. But the reason we've taken the one object and separated it into two masses was so that we can kind of control the F1 and the F2. We also could control the total mass by shifting them around. And that will allow us to do part one and part two, which is part one is to change the net force without changing the total mass and so what you're going to see is we're going to be running an experiment and constantly moving a mass from number one to number two and as we move it from one to two this gets bigger and this gets smaller so the net force keeps going up but the total mass doesn't change and so that's how the experiment is going to be run and that's how we can actually then study part one we can see I'm going to change the net force and see how that affects the acceleration. Now, let me just make one, two, three, four, five columns here, or five rows, because these <coughs> are what we're going to be filling in. And in fact, I would say it's already uh, filled in. If you follow the author's weights here, as I said already, the total will always remain the same at 1200. But the difference is going to keep getting bigger. See, the difference between those is 20, then it's 40, uh, then it's 60, uh, then it's 80, and then it's 100. And that is how we are going to constantly make a measurement where the net force keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but the total mass does not. Now, let's look at part two. Part two, if you look at the numbers here, and I'll then I'll just make five, two, three, four, and five. We're going to be doing that same thing. And if you look at the numbers here in part two, uh, M2 would be 270 and M1 is 250. And so that is a difference of 20. And if you scan all the way down these five, there is always a difference of 20. And so number two is always going to be 20 more than number one. Okay? So the net force doesn't change. But what does change is the total mass. And so if you add these two together here, you get 520. And if you can see, your author has you put 200 more on each side. So this should go up by uh, 400 each time. 800, 900, yeah. And so this should be 13, 20, uh, 17, 20, and 21, 20. And so the mass is really getting bigger and bigger. So again, hopefully we will see how changing the mass then affects the acceleration without changing the net force, part two. Whereas, again, part one is hopefully we will see how changing the net force affects the acceleration without changing the mass. That's really this idea. Now, one other thing, and I'll come over here. We're trying to see if this equation is true. And so if this was face to face, I would say, okay, now do not use this equation. Uh, this is not how we calculate the acceleration. If we were to use that to calculate the acceleration, we're, we're, it's like we're saying, hey, that equation is already true. That equation is already valid. We can already trust it. We can already calculate the acceleration. And for class, go ahead and use that equation. And after we do today's lab, feel free to use that equation. Just don't use it in this uh, lab because the point of this lab is not to assume that equation is true and use it to calculate something. The point here is to collect some data completely separate from that equation and to see if the data that we collect has the same pattern as if we used this equation. And then that would be validating this equation. Uh, if you know the phrase circular reasoning, if you use this equation to get acceleration and then you say your answer matches this equation, <laughs> that's not sound logic. That's what we call circular reasoning. You, you used it 
to only prove that it's true. So what I want to do is collect with you, because we're lab partners here, I want to collect some acceleration data and some force data that is completely separate from this equation and to see if what I collected does match that equation. Or to put another way, that would validate that. That would say that if I had used this equation, it would have gave me the same result. It would be useful. All right, so to get the net force, we are not using this equation. In fact, the equation we're using is just this subtraction one. And so that's the first column. Second column's a little bit harder. How do I get the acceleration without using this equation? And uh, that's why in class, at the beginning of today's lecture, I wanted you to see where this equation came from. And uh, if you hadn't watched the uh, uh, lecture here for today, uh, go back and watch that lecture because this is the equation that we worked out. And one of the things I kept emphasizing over and over again, and want to do that now, is the caveat that this is only true and you should only use it if and only if the initial velocity is zero. And for the lab today, we are going to hook up our pulley system, our Atwoods machine, and we're going to let it go from rest. So it, it is going to start with an initial speed of zero. So that means we can use this equation. And in fact, if I come back over to my picture here and I add maybe the floor here, I can then say that what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the bigger weight up at the top and the lighter one down on the floor. I'm going to let it go and the big one's going to go down some distance, which I will just call h for height. So if I replace the d with an h, since we're talking about height for our distance, I would have what I would just say is really the same equation. And what this equation means then is that if I measure height and time, I can get the acceleration. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And so that's how we are going to fill these in. We are going to fill this in by getting the acceleration using this equation. And I'll say it again. Notice I am not using this equation to get the acceleration. Again, I want to see if that equation is true. So I want to find acceleration and net force some other method than this. And then when I get that result, see if the results I get would have the same pattern as this equation. So that would validate that equation. And we will see that. Uh, Newton, like I said, started this idea and then Atwoods tested the idea. And to be honest, students have been testing it for 300 years since. And so we keep getting more and more confirmation that it that it does work. Um, although our equipment has a little bit more friction than we would like, and you'll notice we haven't included any friction, we get decent results. Uh, actually really good results, but not, not, not perfect. Okay, so I need to take maybe one more step here. Uh, let me solve this equation for A. So I'm gonna put the two onto the other side of the equation. I'm then going to divide by the time squared. Maybe I'll make it look a little nicer and put an A and put a box around it. So this is what I was leading up to. Th this is how we are going to get the acceleration for today's experiment. We are going to measure the height and the time and from that then calculate the acceleration. Or I should say, I'm going to measure with you the height and the time and then I'm gonna leave it to you to calculate the acceleration. And then I'm going to leave it to you to do the graphs. And I'm going to leave it to you to then show once you've done the graph, they are proportional and therefore match Newton's second law. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. So if I hold up page 19 again, you will see that we have a little chart here where it says write down height, write down time. And then from that, I can use this to get acceleration. And then I can make a, a plot. So what I'll do here on the board is make a little column for me. Here's height and here's time. One, 
two, three, four, five. And so let me begin the lab here and then measure five different, or well, well five different settings of this where the net force keeps changing. All right, so let's come over to here and that's what you saw earlier. Uh, you saw this long string that was wrapped over this pulley and kind of got it in there our way with our uh, photography. Um, but this is going to be the height of it. And in a moment, I will put on the weight, which if I remember right, was 610. Um, but before I, I do that, maybe I will just go ahead and then write down how high is it. And so taking my two meter stick, I will get, and I'll write this in meters, uh, it's 100, well, 151.2, and that's centimeters. So let me just write that in here. Uh, what I say, 151.2 centimeters. So let me put the dot over there and say, okay, that's the height in meters. So I'm about one and a half meters above the uh, floor here. And now I can put on the, the weights. And let me just check the numbers. Looks like the heavy one is 610. And uh, the hanger itself is already 100. So I'm going to put a 500 on here. So that right there is a total of 600. And I'm going to reach in and grab myself a 10. And so there... is the 610. Now the lighter one is 590 and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, put 590 on here and I'll say it again this hanger is already a hundred so I have a 200 and another 200 so that's a total of 500. Uh, here's a 50, so that's 550. And if I grab a 20 and another 20, that's 590. Now I suppose I should be a little bit careful here. Uh, because the extra weight on here may have stretched the string a little bit. And uh, if this was face to face, I would encourage uh, one person to pull it down on the ground while the other person holds it. Uh, I don't have quite that luxury of a second set of hands, but what I'm going to do instead is to say that with this extra tension on here, um, I'm going to say this is going to be the height when I bring up the heavier ones, only slightly heavier. But I'm glad I redid this because that number needs to be adjusted by quite a bit. It stretched more than uh, uh, I imagined it, it would, but because right now I am at 148.1. And so I'll come back over to here and put 148.1 centimeters and write it down in, in meters. Okay, so with that in mind, you know what I probably could do to Don? I mean, maybe I can just shove a heavier weight to keep it temporarily down and see if there's any difference. Let's see if that'll stay on there. Now that the heavier one is up. Yeah, I like that. And it's actually further out, so it's a little more what we'll call torque when we get to chapter eight. And so let's see. Oh, there's a little difference. Not much. 
But I'm, again, glad I did this again. So this is about a 147.8. All right, so it looks like we lost about four millimeters here. All right, so 147.8. Uh, okay, finally now, I think we're, we're ready to go here. So let me turn on my stopwatch. Start, stop, reset. Okay. And uh, I'll get a little close to the floor here so I can hold it. Uh, this is a lab that really works a lot better with uh, two people. But nonetheless, I'll do the best I can and see what we get. And so one, two, three, start. And... I wasn't watching real well because I've seen that shake off. Now, how am I going to watch that? Usually I have one person watch that and one person watch that. But that one was slow enough it shouldn't fall off. So I'm going to try that one again. But I got four seconds, 0.55. I'm going to keep that one in the back of my, my head here. Let's see. I won't worry about it falling off. I'll just kind of step back. And if it does fall off, it won't hit me. But I'll keep my eye down here. Ready, start. Stop. Yeah, see, that was a little bit lower. So glad I, I, I did it. And so this is 4.35 seconds. Okay. And so that's your first uh, bit of data. So let's move on to the next one. And the next one means that we want to reduce this by 10. So this becomes a 580. So let me take off a 20 and put on a 10. So that's a 580. And then this one needs to go up by 10. And so I will take off first a 10 and place on a 20. And then let's just check the height again. Because again... I know that as this weight gets more and more, uh, since this is out kind of far, the height it twists a little bit and the height changes. Now, it doesn't change by much. It changes much more in part two. But, uh, yeah, this is a new height. And this is 146. Point eight. Is that a whole centimeter? Okay. 146.8. All right. I'm learning something too here. All right. So 146.8. So a little bit less in height. And the string, these are pretty stretchy uh, strings. So they, 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 they stretch out here as we uh, change the the different weights across them. All right, now I know this one goes pretty fast and this one very easily could come off. And uh, I will try to keep my eye down here and maybe I'll just let it fall, I don't know. All right, so here we go. Let's see, this is the uh, heavier one up here. All right, so it's pretty much ready to go. Take the Wait off. Okay. One, two, three, go. And I'll keep my eye on it. Stop. Nice. Didn't fall off yet. <laughs> All right. Uh, fortunately, I think it's only going to be this side. The other, the other side go pretty slow. So this is a 308. So 308 for the time. All right. Let's keep going here. 
Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. So the 580, I think, is what I was at, right? 580, yeah. So now we're down to 570. And 570 means I should take a 10 off. So that's 570. And I should put that 10 on here, which should make this then a 630. Okay. So again, notice the total mass is the same. And so if I take the lighter one and this little weight here will be my partner. Hold it down. Okay, partner. Stay there. Okay. There we go. Yeah. And I just want to check the height each time because I know that this string tends to unwind and it tends to stretch and the bar tends to bend a little bit. And uh, sure enough, like we're at about 146 even. Okay. So 1.460. Okay. So let me go ahead and grab my stopwatch here again. Like I said in the labs, as we're working as a partner, you're writing down the data. Be nice if you could help me hold it, but I guess I'll give you an excuse this time. All right, and then I'll, I'll get, the, get the times here. All right, so this one, I think it's gonna come off. Hopefully, let me encourage it to, when it comes off, fall inward. So maybe it will get trapped on the mechanism that holds it and it won't fall on my head or anything here. Well, we'll see. Okay, so never quite done it like this, but uh, let's go and take this crazy thing off and reset and ready, go. And I'll stand back and stop. Ah, oh, good, it did fall inward. All right, so it fell off, but it fell in the right direction. Uh, that's good. And so I will go to point five, nine seconds for there. And I think you can just see in the experiment that we're beginning to see what we're trying to prove, and, and that is that as the net force keeps getting bigger, what happens to the acceleration? We're definitely seeing it's bigger. Now, whether we see it's proportional or not, we, we won't do, know that until we do some calculations. But that's gonna be your end of the, of the lab, to do the calculations in the graph and show it's proportional. Okay, so coming back to here, and let's do this then a third, I mean a fourth time. Um, and so, so what are we at now? We should be at five, 60, for the lighter one. All right, so let me put the heavy one down here. And so let me just loosen this and take off the 20. Uh, maybe I'll just grab myself a, another 10 down here. So there's 560. Which down here then should make 640. And I'll take off a 10 and put on a, a 20. So this, again, this heavier one is definitely getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And so let me take the lighter one down to here. Let's hold the the lighter one into, into place. And again, it's probably stretched a little bit, so the height's probably a little bit less. Oh yeah. 44.7? Okay, so 144.7. Uh, so 144.7. Okay. 
seven. Yeah, I wonder if that falling off snagged the string and made it, you know, stretch a little bit because we went down uh, quite a bit. And make, it makes sense. And snagged it and pulled on it, and now the string's a little longer, and so the distance to the floor is a little bit less. Okay, so there's my my new height. Um, man, grab my my stopwatch here, and again, I'll just good angle it a little way so when it does fall off, hopefully it'll it'll fall that direction. And uh, here's where this one's going to get going really fast, no, although not as fast as the last one here. Okay, and then if I go start, step back, stop, and surprisingly that hit hard and didn't even come off. <laughs> so just bounced around a little bit. All right, but you can, it is going uh, obviously faster because the time is less. And so this is just two. Uh, 16 and finally the last of part one here and that is to take the lighter one down to 550 so I'll take the 10 off here and I will transfer that down to here and this should be then 650 And then if I take this lighter one, bring it all the way down, and put a little extra weight on it for a second. Oh, maybe I need more and barely hold it because that's a only difference of a hundred here. I'm shaking. But uh, let me see what the height is. And it did fall off and snag, but it is more weight, and so it's a 144 even. So it is a little bit of a change, but uh, not as big as the time it had the string snag on it. Okay. 